Start right. off with the 2017-18 audit. Mr. Corey Johnson <coughs> and Daniel Sepp. So, we have our auditors here tonight. Uh, Corey and Dan have been working with us for the last couple of years on the audit. Um, Dan is Corey's the managing partner, and Dan is the uh, manager. Yes, on the job. Yes, so he's the one that's usually out here working, uh, you know, with our finance department on the audit. Good evening. How are you? Good. Right. Just put together a little presentation very similar to what we did last year. I'm going to throw throw some highlights out on top of that. Um, just the, the first page. There we go. Just introduction, contact information. I'm Corey Johnson with Dan Seifert. Our information, if any of you whatever have questions, don't hesitate to call us. Uh, we're always around. We'd be happy to speak with anybody. Um, financial statement audit performed in accordance with auditing standards generally set in the United States of America, similar to the past, um, as well government auditing standards. Well, what does that mean? That means we also look at things just beyond the numbers, we're looking at compliance with certain laws, grant agreements, things like that. Um, happy to tell you, I'm probably jumping a page here, but you know, we, we have to look at controls too. So we have controls at the financial statement level, like the, the district as a whole. Now we have to look at controls at the federal level. So, so the big federal dollars that come through your district. Um, we had no findings, and that's where we audit a lot of school districts, uh, a lot of larger ones too. You know, budgets of 60, 70 million up, and, and most of the time we do a lot of findings. So, in the three years we've been here, we think that that hasn't been a problem. So, I'm happy to tell you that. Um, that was the next page. If you look at like of all the federal dollars that, that came through the school. We audited 54% of those dollars. We were only required to audit under the new standards, like 20%. But we, uh, that, that's what we picked. Um, and again, no issues whatsoever related to the compliance with federal dollars. Some of the required communications we're supposed to have here. Uh, we had no difficulties uh, in encountered before the audit, no disagreements with management. Uh, management, uh, Brian and his staff, Signed a letter that's pretty bad anymore. <laughs> Probably four pages of all these things that we asked about, saying it was true. That they gave us honest feedback and, and all the information we requested. Um, as far as we know, there was no management consultation with other accountants. I don't think there's any issue that required that. You know, just, just to be upfront. Um, and other audit issues. One of the things I want to talk about. I know. I think last time I was here was right when the the pension line. Was and so it really changed the face of what you're looking at. If you look at your financial statements, it's the statement of deposition. It has like a $300 million deficit. And back then it was a big deficit. And you're like, wow, what is that? You're not alone. Every school district has a deficit proportional to that. And you ask, well, why, why would that be? Put it as, as easy of terms as I can. So you have put, a few years back, you put a pension liability, which is $200 and some million dollars on the books. There's no offsetting asset for that. So you put a liability on that's going to force it to look like a deficit position. There was a new standard this year for other post-employment benefits. Um, and that was a large liability, again, put on the book. So that just increased that deficit. Every school district looks the same. I'm here to tell you that. Um, you're no different. Actually, your pension liability decreased this year. Uh, I think $22 million. <coughs> top of my head, which um, is a lot of the restructuring that you've done. In the past, um, you know, it's tied to salaries and FTEs. So you think about think about what's happened in the school district industry in the last 15 years. I may be a little bit off, but, but follow my example here. 15 years ago, every district was contributing less than 5% per teacher to PCERS. That is now about 32.6% per teacher. So you guys look at your budget, you know what the impact of that is. The other post-employment benefits is, is very similar. So it's just driving your budget up. Um, we work with all types of governments, and I, I still, I've, I've had this conversation with Brian, I think school districts control less of their budget than any other governmental entity. I mean, it's mandates, so you know, you're, you're doing the best with what you have. Um, you look at the trend you're on, though, so when we've been here, we had a going concern opinion two years ago. Um, and frankly, I mean, I've, I've worked in the government industry for 23 years, I've never given a going concern opinion to any governmental entity that has taxing authority. Um, but, but I think it, 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 it worked, it helped send the message. I think to Harrisburg, you look at where things are now, 
suddenly you have all this deficit fund balance, you're sitting with an $8 million fund balance now, which is 4% of your current year expenditures. That's, that's coming a long way three years, three years ago where you're at. So that's progress. And I think with the annual state money, uh, you know, looking at the forecast, that's one of the things we ask about. So we sit down with Brian and his staff to look at that. I mean, things are looking positive. You face the same battle, when, you know, most urban schools do. It's charter schools, you know, there's always threats of, you know, how do you consolidate things, how do you manage things more effectively, all those things. I think, you know, the board and the management team is doing a nice job of that. Just to give you some highlights. So these are just, if you wanted to read the auditor's report, it gives you some page numbers. I would, I would suggest, if you're going to look at this, I do suggest you read the management discussion and analysis. That was designed to give people of governance, such as yourself, like a year-to-year -year comparison as to what's going on. And at a high level, it's like 10 pages of reading. You don't even need to read all the pages. Start with where the numbers start. And that'll give you a good flavor as to what's happening. But uh, it's positive. So where we are. Um, again, these are the single audit report, which is uh, the small report that you have. It's just a, some guidance on the page numbers to look at again. I already said we looked at about a little over 50% of the federal dollars this year. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to contact us. I'm just trying to give you, give you some highlights as to where things are. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yes. Well, appreciate your work. And appreciate happy it. Here. Things were headed in the right direction. It's, uh, I wish I could take some of the credit. That's your management team. That's what I meant, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We want to find it, Mr. Polito. So I just wanted to give the board a quick update. We're, we're moving along with uh, the work to, to prepare for our 2019 bond issue to, to fund part of our phase one uh, facilities plan. We did have our rating calls yesterday um, set through couple hours with, uh, with both Moody's and S&P. Um, uh, we all thought that it went very well. Uh, we we're, were hopeful that um, when we get our S&P bond rating back right now, we'll one, one rating above junk status, uh, triple B minus. We're hoping um, at a minimum that they remove the minus, which is a negative outlook, um, and, and at least put it as neutral. Um, on the outside, if we're lucky, they might make it triple B plus and move us up too. So uh, we're going to find out here in about a, a week or two where they're going to be, and once we have that, we'll report out. Super. On the strategic plan. Strategic plan. I just um, we have our uh, continuing to move move along there. We just wanted to let the board know that we have our data summit. Our last one of the school year scheduled for this Monday. It starts at eight o'clock. Yes. Um, at, uh, and it's a Gannon in the Yale Ballroom. If anybody wants to attend, uh, we'd, we'd love to have you. If you want to touch on what we're going to go over. <clears throat> so the, the schools are coming with their ILTs, which is their instructional leadership teams. They're going to go over the uh, data from the CDTs that they've had so far from uh, the beginning of the year till now. And then they will uh, do the analysis. They'll look at how the adult practices, what, what's the instructional practices they're doing in the buildings. And then they'll analyze that. And then in the afternoon, they're gonna look at the next six to 12 weeks, so the end of the year, and what will happen in the classrooms to support student achievement in the classroom. So that's the plan for that Monday. And then on Tuesday, there's the early dismissal day so that they'll go back to their buildings and share it with their entire faculty. We, we put together a timeline for the end of this year and through, through next year for implementation. Uh, one of the things that we mentioned, I just want to point out again, we, uh, this year, so that we don't lose any time next year, we've asked the, the buildings to put together their uh, building level plans <coughs> by the end of the school year. Um, we'll, after the data summit, we're going to get together with our strategic plan team and put together the non-negotiables for the district this year. It was uh, requiring them to have a goal in um, English language arts, math, and behavior. Um, we'll, we'll put those non-negotiables out here in about a week or so. 
ask them to complete their plans with those in it for the end of the school year. And then after we have all their plans, we're going to com complete the district level uh, implementation plan for, for 1920. And that's going to be based on what the buildings are doing. So we're going to wrap supports around what their, their <laughs> initiatives are so that uh, they have more control over where they go. Any questions? Mark? Will those plans that include the one instructional person that each building is, is going to be hiring? Or that yes. 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 Okay. And that would be based around their plan? What they, That's right. What they yes. Good? I'm good. All right. We'll move on to the next one, which is Employee of the Month. Angela uh, McNair brought this up to Brian and I, and we both thought it was a pretty good idea. I think we just have to kind of figure out which goes to your policy. We could discuss that policy. You know, that there's a policy that is on record that when I first got elected that I asked, uh, it's a resolution talking about researching and implementing morale building and team building such, uh, you know, different avenues and doing that. And although it's sometimes looked at and tried to be applied, it never really has been able to take hold because of all the money problems that we've dealt with, all the different things we've dealt with. But I, it, it is a resolution, it was passed, and so I would like to, on my last year, that at least everyone tries to take a look at that and hopefully can be implemented. I would appreciate it. So I don't know how we do this, Brian. You guys could probably have to come up with some type of, I don't know, committee or something. Yeah. For employee of the month. Yeah, yeah. If, if the board's uh, in favor of this, we'll put together some type of proposal and bring it to you next month. Anybody have an issue with it? Discussion? Anything? I think it's a great idea. I do think it's a great idea. Um, I've seen it work wonders in a lot of places. It also can, you, it can cause some chaos um, as well, too, because people will feel favored, people want to process. Um, so there is, there's, there's pluses and minuses to both sides. As long yeah. as I think as we, and it's not just, I think that we just need to be judicious about how, how we implement it. Yeah, okay. that's, that's the important part. It's, it, it is very important. It's open for everybody too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just, I think at one time we tried it, but I think they just did it with teachers. Well, how you choose and how the cho choice right. is made and then, and then the, the other employees, sometimes it can cause more dissension than it does, yeah. you know. That's we why if you, could all, if you could all take, Angela, could you do that for me? Could you find that resolution and make sure that it's distributed to everybody in the board and the superintendent, everybody, and so they could, because if you, you know, maybe we could begin that process. Thank you. Everybody's all right with that? So we'll move on. Anything on new business or supplemental? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I kind of, I've chatted about this a little bit with Dar. I know we've brought up a little bit with B, um, but I've had several students reach out to me now, mostly from collegiate, just really upset about the hoodie issue stuff again. And I know this conversation is kind of a mumbling, but some of the, some of the students are getting reprimanded for it while other students are not. And so there's just a lot of, I think it's just causes. So we need to figure out, are we either going to implement it and fairly, or are we not going to implement it at all? Because it's just not, it's just yeah. not fair. Yeah. Some of the kids are being held different yeah. standards. We heard that loud and clear in the student voices. So okay. we'll, we'll uh, take another look at that and come back to you with the recommendation. Thank you. Yeah. We have a planned meeting for the handbook to review the handbook <coughs> first, and then we'll get it to Jenny, and then we'll bring it to you. Any other matter before we go into executive? If not, we'll go into executive session.